One. Chairman Robach and I and myself are here today to announce a new initiative to get Pennsylvania graduates into paying, good paying careers. Tomorrow, the House Education Committee will consider House Resolution 102, of which the Chairman Robach and myself are co-sponsors, creating a subcommittee on technical education and career readiness. Representative Grove will be our majority chairman of that subcommittee, and this effort is to focus on making better use of our current resources and connect graduates and employers with jobs to the fill. One of the reasons for this new subcommittee is a meeting I recently had with Mayor Nutter of Philadelphia. In that meeting, he told me there was 31,000 jobs, good paying tech jobs in the city of Philadelphia that they can't fill. So in 2013, when unemployment was over 7%, a study by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Commerce found that 72% of Pennsylvania companies have difficulty hiring employees with adequate skills, training, and education. We're, if we are not putting Pennsylvania graduates into careers available here in Pennsylvania, we're not using our resources correctly. Only 30% of our graduates from traditional four-year liberal arts colleges have careers in the fields that they have their degree in. And they have a burden here in Pennsylvania of over $33,000 debt per student, one of the highest in the nation. Meanwhile, graduates here in Pennsylvania in our trade schools and science and technology schools have little problem landing good jobs, good paying jobs here in Pennsylvania in the field that they graduate in. Examples, Thaddeus Stevens School of Technology, which is located in Lancaster, in the past three years, from 2010 to 2012, has a 97% placement rate for students landing jobs within their field of study. The average starting salary for a Stevens Tech graduate is close to $50,000 a year. Over 50% of the graduates that have student debts from there is only about $12,000. Harrisburg University, the Science and Technology School, this past May, had a 100% placement for their university graduates in the field of their study. Our society has clung onto this outdated notion that our children must go to a four-year liberal arts college in order to be successful. This archaic notion do not apply to today's society or its educational opportunities. In today's careers, if we're going to push our children to take out loans and to get a degree, we have a responsibility that they make sure that they have the type of jobs and the skills needed to pay off that debt. We need to ask, do we have an education system in place to create the workforce needed to fill the jobs out there today? Are we going to make these candidates connect with the business they need and that wants them? At a recent economic development meeting in the Pocono region, Justin Moon, president of Car Firearms, who recently moved his headquarters from New York to Pennsylvania, said his, manu uh, his Massachusetts manufacturing facility partnered with trade and vocational schools to get the best trained candidates, and that he would consider doing that here in Pennsylvania. And at a recent policy meeting improving Pennsylvania's business climate, one at York County, at the York, York County, York College, Business leaders said being proactive and sought out STEM education for this area in order to fill jobs. They had to fight for it. These successful businessmen and women see there's an opportunity, but they see an educational disconnect and they want to see that gap closed. We have the resources right here in Pennsylvania, but I believe our resources have to be in full effect. So at this time, I'd like to recognize Chairman Roebuck for a few comments. Chairman Roebuck. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm pleased today to stand in support of the of House uh, Resolution 103, uh, 102, which establishes the Select Subcommittee on Technical Education Career Readiness. Uh, it's clear that we need to look at what we're doing in the areas of preparation of our young people in terms of technical and career uh, education. We need to build a clear bridge that makes clear that there are opportunities that young people can take advantage of if they choose to pursue careers in technical and career uh, education. Uh, that is a challenge, and I believe that this subcommittee will 
be able to articulate clear ways to ensure that every student is exposed to those opportunities, that we open up an understanding of how those opportunities can benefit young people, that we establish a clear partnership with our business community that allows our young people to find careers that will be good for them, that will allow them to uh, establish a firm career, and that will give them opportunities for success. So I'm very uh, optimistic that this particular initiative will be a benefit to the young people in Pennsylvania and will provide them with a better opportunity moving forward. And I look forward to the adoption of the resolution on tomorrow. Thank you. This time, Representative Seth Grove. Thank you, Chairman Saylor. Uh, it's a great honor uh, today to join my colleagues and uh, some uh, great organizations who uh, obviously support uh, career and technical education. Uh, I look forward to uh, working with my colleagues in a bipartisan fashion to set a path forward linking jobs and our education system. It's that simple. Uh, Stan mentioned uh, about 23,000 jobs in Philadelphia. Pittsburgh's looking at the same amount of jobs. 23,000 high quality, high paid, family sustaining jobs opening. We have jobs in York County, South Central Pennsylvania. We've always had a need uh, for welders uh, through the manufacturing base in South Central Pennsylvania. This is a great way to show uh, Pennsylvanians uh, that we're looking for out of the box ways to redevelop and rethink how we do career and technical education, to add on the great work that's already been done in Pennsylvania and uh, build a pathway forward, again, linking jobs, and our education system uh, to make sure we retain the best and bright he here within Pennsylvania with all our natural resources and all the benefits that this great state has to offer. Look forward to working with my colleagues. Looking forward to thank you again for the opportunity. And uh, as soon as uh, the budget appropriations uh, committee is done, which I serve on, uh, we'll get to work straight forward and uh, moving forward with the game, game plan forward. So thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Majority Leader Dave Reed. Th thank you very much. Uh, first, I would like to thank Representative Saylor, Representative Roebuck, and Representative Grove for their leadership on this issue and all the members who have an interest in moving uh, this sort of exploration forward. Uh, when I was policy committee chairman, we had the opportunity to explore this issue from two different perspectives, from the economic development perspective, but also from the poverty perspective. And as we had those conversations around the state, uh, we were made aware from local elected officials as well as folks in the business community, educational community, and the human service community of a great disconnect that is out there in our Commonwealth. And I think this is a wonderful opportunity for us to work together with education, with the business community, to try to derive a product that will help lead more folks from a life of poverty to one of self-sustainability and do so in a reasonable fashion where they're not racking up tens of thousands of dollars of student debt along the way. And I think this is an all, also a wonderful opportunity for us to engage in a broader discussion on education this spring. You know, as certainly the governor will address education in his budget address next week, and we always tend to focus on education within uh, the, the confines of this capital on how are we performing in the classroom, how much money are we spending on education, how are we distributing those dollars. I think this gives us a wonderful opportunity to focus on what is the product of that education. How are we leading folks from the classroom to self-sustainability to the workplace? What product are we producing? The discussion on education cannot be just about the quantity of the dollars we spend, although that is a very legitimate topic of discussion for that exploration, but it's also got to be focused on the quality of the product we're producing. By working hand in hand with our educational community and our business community, we have a greater possibility of enhancing that quality of the product, and I think that is a worthwhile endeavor for all Pennsylvanians as we look to keep more and more of our young folks working within the parameters of our state in the years ahead. So again, I'd like to thank Representative Saylor, Representative Roebuck, and Representative Grove for their leadership, and I look forward to working with them, our colleagues in the Senate, and the governor on this initiative going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Again, and I, I think the key word here is careers. I mean, uh, we want to take some questions here, but 
there's a difference between having a job, you know, working at a department store or a grocery store or wherever it may be, versus having a career that you want to really enter when you come out of a trade school or a four-year college degree. So those are the things that are important. And I want to thank my colleagues from the House Republican Democratic Caucuses that are here today, as well as there are representatives here from our public schools, our vocational schools, our colleges and our universities, and the business community, who again are behind this initiative that Chairman Roebuck and I and, and the House is going to take in moving forward. So at this point, uh, we'll take questions, if there's any questions from the media. Yes. All of those things. We're looking to uh, community colleges, our trade schools. How can we do better in Pennsylvania connecting them with the business community and jobs? And also, it's about educating the students and parents as well that there are great opportunities out there. When you think about it today, that a welder can come out of a trade school today and start making, start at $75,000. And that's just a starting salary. And that's just one career. But there are multitudes, so there are opportunities out there. I, I like to, to talk about my own father. He thought if I wasn't wearing a tie, I wasn't necessarily successful. It's not about whether you, what you wear to work every day. I go to Harley-Davidson, I've been many there many times. If you go to Harley-Davidson, it's different than what Harley-Davidson would have been 20 years ago. 20 years ago, you might have worked at Harley-Davidson building motorcycles in York, and at the same time, you came home, you were dirty, you need to take a shower. Today, you can go in there and you can almost eat off the floor. That plant and that facility is that clean. That's the difference in what has happened in manufacturing day, robotics, and the things that have changed. And we need to educate people that there are great careers out there for people other than just going and getting a four-year degree. If it's a four-year degree you want, that's great. But I want to, to make sure that parents know and students know today that 40-year degrees are important in fields that there are jobs available in Pennsylvania. When you have a debt of $33,000 and you have a four-year degree, but you have a debt, if you can't get a job in your career field, how do you pay that debt back? So we need to do more, a better job of connecting our colleges and our university and trade schools with the business community that we're training jobs for today. Long explanation, I apologize. Good. 